Now the external assessment is the thing you have the least control over, but it is something that probably dominates your thoughts and your teaching the most. Um, because while with the other internal assessments, if you haven't taught students a particular aspect of those, generally you can um, revise your teaching as you progress and make modifications to ensure that the students can complete the tasks and have all the learning needed to complete them. With the external assessment, you don't have that flexibility. You have to make sure that you have um, taught your students all that they need to know and do in order to be able to do well on the external assessment. And of course, you won't know what is actually in the external assessment. And the external assessment doesn't cover everything from the curriculum every year, but it potentially could. So it, it reigns high in your thought processes throughout your teaching. And indeed, that is part of the purpose of it, to make sure you don't skim over and uh, minimize some aspects of the curriculum that are important simply because you're not, you're not interested in teaching it or you find your students aren't interested in it and so forth. You have to make sure that you engage your students with all the essential elements of the syllabus and that your students are prepared to be able to be assessed on those elements. So quite, a, quite an involved process. Now there are example um, student or example exams that we now have available. So there's quite a few of them, uh, four or five now, plus the ones that were originally set up. Um, the more recent ones tend to be the better ones uh, because the QCAA was still learning about setting these assessments for digital solutions in the first few and particularly in the trial ones. But they all provide an overview and some insight into what is expected through the external assessment processes. And as we've discussed, cognitive verbs are an essential element of this, which really frame for the students what they are meant to do in response to a particular question. The question will be framed using the cognitive verbs, and if students understand the cognitive verbs, they will understand what is required in terms of what the question or how the question needs to be addressed doesn't necessarily incorporate the content knowledge from the curriculum, but it certainly provides them with guidance in the type of response that is required from the exam question. So again, I've given you some resources to have a look at a couple of video clips and some um, reminders around the cognitive verbs, and we'll discuss these in the tutorial.